For this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to um, calculate indices in the clinic. And as you can see on the screen, I have the top of the indices form. Um, there are three different indices, calculus, plaque, and gingival, and they're all calculated the same way. So I'm going to take the calculus index and demonstrate how to do that, and then you can apply that knowledge to the other two indices. Let's look at the criteria um, for the calculus index. Each of the ind indices have their own criteria, but they're, they're all similar. So we're basically going to have a zero, which is there's no calculus. A one means there is supra calculus, maybe slightly uh, below the margin, basically mild calculus. A uh, two is going to have a moderate amount of calculus, and a three is going to have an abundance of calculus. So we're going to be using those numbers to determine our overall calculus index. I'm going to zoom in on the actual calculus grid so that you guys can have a good look at what I'm doing. I think blow that up just a little bit more. Okay, so when we're assigning the calculus, we're going to be looking at this over here is the tooth number that you're going to look at. Now, if tooth number three is missing, you can just use the tooth behind it or the tooth in front of it. But generally, we're going to do these teeth because this gives us a good mix of teeth in the different areas of the mouth. So if there's one missing, just move to the next one. And then we're going to be looking at these four surfaces of each of the teeth listed. So we're going to look at three mesial, facial, distal, lingual. And we're going to assign a calculus number based on what we're seeing. So, for instance, on the mesial of number three, let's say there's an abundance of supra and subgingival calculus. Then we're going to assign a three. And the facial, there was mild. Distal, there was moderate. Lingual, there was none. So we're going to assign a number to each surface of the tooth listed based on the criteria. The next step is going to be to get an average per tooth. So here you can see it's, it's asking us to get an average per tooth, which is going to be in this, these boxes. So I need to add up this, 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 and this, and then divide by four and get an average here. And that's going to be 1.5 for that tooth. And then I'm going to do the same thing on each of these lines to get an average per tooth. Okay, now I have uh, average per tooth. And the next step is to determine an overall average. So we need to total up all of these numbers and then put the total in this box. And then our next step is to divide that number by six to get our total calculus index. So as you can see, I got 2.13 for my overall calculus index. I'm gonna shrink that back so we can look at the criteria together. Your calculus index should be uh, resemble what the criteria says. So for instance, our overall calculus index is 2.13. That tells me that this patient has an overall moderate a, a moderate amount of supra and subgingival calculus. If your number is higher than three, you've calculated incorrectly because the highest that the calculus index could be is three. So you'll want to go back and revisit your calculations if you get anything above three. Also, you can tell if you're, if, for instance, if my calculus index had been 0.5, Look how many threes and twos I have over here, and we're trying to get an average for the whole mouth. 
So it should really reflect your patient's condition based on the criteria. So a couple of pointers. We're going to round off to the second decimal and we're gonna make sure that our overall calculus index is less than three. There is an auto note in EagleSoft for you to record your indices. So when you record the indices, this is the number that we want to record. When you go back and you follow up with that patient and do your second or third indices, our hope would be that we would see this number go down. So we would see it decline. This is one way of making goals with your patient that you can track because we'll be able to track their success based on the outcome of our second or third indices. If you have any questions about indices, please feel free to email me.